Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so today I will be presenting some examples of creative and unconventional uses of Wikimedia Commons in order to lead us to a better understanding of built heritage, especially built heritage like monuments, cities, etc. Uh, so my name is Nasima, I'm from Morocco, and I'm actually an architect and heritage consultant. I'm also a Wikimedian since 2000. 18, and I am the co-founder of WikiWord Heritage User Group. And this year I've been doing a master's about architecture and historic urban environments in University College London. And actually I'm giving you all these details because it's the combination of these profiles that led me uh, to, this, to exploring these uses of Wikimedia Commons. Uh, so, in this presentation, I will start by two introductory questions, and I hope that you will be reactive. They are very simple. Uh, then I will share some thoughts on built heritage based on my experiences. And then I will present an experimental project through which I will explain these two examples of unconventional uses of commons. And finally, I hope that we will have some time for discussion. So the first question, uh, first of all, are there any people that are very active on Wikimedia Commons here? Great. So what do you think is the ultimate purpose of your contributions on Wikimedia Commons? Why do you contribute? For fun. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yes. Documenting. Very good. Um, actually, as an architect, I would go further. I think that the ultimate goal of sharing knowledge on Wikimedia Commons especially is to provide some extensive material for heritage professionals uh, for analysis and decision making. Actually, I use Commons very, very frequently, not just as a contributor, but also as a user, and it's very beneficial. Uh, the second question is, when I say Wikimedia Commons, heritage, monuments, what comes to your mind first? Yes, great. <laughs> this is exactly my answer. Actually, Wiki Loves Monuments is the most well-known ca campaign in, in the Wikimedia sphere. And it is a great campaign. It's helped us collecting millions of photos, maybe, uh, of multiple monuments around the world, etc. But Actually, I think that Wiki Loves Monuments is not enough, and it is very reductive when it comes to built heritage, and why. So, I will share some thoughts about what is built heritage from my perspective as a heritage professional. Beyond the monuments that we see, the facade, the building, the material, the forms, etc., there are many other components. There are the textures that we touch, when we touch a wall, when we touch a window, when we touch anything in this building. There are the sounds, there are the memories and emotions that this building triggers among us. There are the smells, the stories, the rituals. There is a whole um, set of intangible and tangible components that are related to these buildings or cities and that make them very different from any normal building. So just remember your hometowns and cities. There is a huge difference between the emotion that you have from a heritage building, a historic building, and a very random building on the street. And actually, these elements are what, my, what make the importance of heritage and, that, and what make heritage being so. It's not the beauty of the building, but the meaning and the experience that it has for people. So I think that our interaction with heritage is based on this and not just on the visual aspect of this built heritage. Therefore, I think that we perceive it through three different levels. The first one is this visual perception that we all document on Wikimedia Commons. But there is another level, it is the sensorial perception, how we experience the space, what are the smells, sounds, etc., that remain in our uh, memory when visiting a heritage site, a city, a building, etc. And finally, this emotional perception, what is our intimate relation with these buildings, what are our feelings regarding them, our emotions, etc. And I think that if we want to document built heritage and we fail in documenting this level two and three, then we are failing this documentation. And Wikimedia Commons shouldn't be an exception. It is a wonderful tool that allows for 
multiple and flexible uses, and we shouldn't be reducing it to image. I think that Wikimedia Commons can be also used for recording the sensorial experiences and also for capturing the emotional interactions between people and heritage. And that's why this year I launched this experimental project in London that is called Brent is You. And ironically, because of my master is very extensive and I was very busy, so I was thinking that I'll be disconnected from Wikimedia this year. But I found myself relying mainly on Wikimedia Commons to understand the built heritage in a city that I am new to. So this project is about one of the boroughs of London. Its name is Brandt, and it is characterized by being very, very, very culturally diverse. Actually, just 16% of the residents of this borough are white British, and the other communities are coming from all the parts of the world. It's overwhelmingly uh, diverse, and I wanted to understand and to map this diversity through the public spaces and how they showcase these cultural and identities. But then what I found is that the majority of buildings in this borough are simple British Londonian buildings with this red British brick. So I was wondering, where is the diversity in the public space? And then I thought there are other aspects of this space, the sound, for example. And that's how came the idea of shifting from the image to another component to document the space. And I thought about sound. And there is already an existing concept, maybe some of you know it. It's sound mapping. Sound mapping means creating digital geographical maps that put emphasis not on the image, but on the sonic representation of a specific geographic location, a street, a building, uh, a valley, a natural space, anything. And sound maps in cities are created through this association between landmarks and their soundscapes instead of their images. And it can be very, very, very useful and give information that the image cannot give. And here is an example. Those three buildings exist in the borough of Brandt and they are very similar. If you remove the entrance plaques, for example, you cannot tell that these buildings host different activities belonging to different communities. But if we use the sound mapping, the difference between them will be very, very drastic. So using Wikimedia Commons, I uploaded the sounds that I could hear within these buildings. And using Wikidata, I generated this very simple map just of the names of the buildings and where I show just the names of the buildings and their soundscape instead of image. And we have the first building is actually Shiv Shakti Mamildi Temple, that is a Hindu temple. And here is what we hear. The second building is the Eritrean Orthodox Church. And the building is very similar to the first one, but this is what we hear. <laughs> This is a prayer as well, just like the first building, which is the temple. And the third one is the Islamic College of London. And we have, once again, a very different sonic experience. <laughs> So let's go back to the images. They are very similar buildings, but when using just the sound, we hear a different language, a different religion, a different kind of rituals, and it's a whole different feeling and atmosphere. And once again, the similarity in terms of images is very striking and make them very normal, boring buildings in a, random borough of London. So 
From this experience, we can deduce some uh, added values of the sound mapping. First of all, it can capture the differences that cannot be conveyed by the image. Second, it gives focus on a specific type of information because maybe you were wondering why I didn't use video instead of just the sound. Actually, when you use the video, you are still focusing on the image, on the colors, on the materials and all these types of things. But the audio, just the audio, it gives you a very pure information that really uh, conveys the message of difference that you want to convey through this example. Then I could use it in this project to differentiate between authentic and touristic places. Uh, I used it also for restaurants, streets, and I could tell where are the restaurants, for example, where those communities go and where are these restaurants where, that are more touristic than authentic. Then it is a very immersive experience. Just close your eyes and you will feel that you are within the building a thing that cannot be experienced through the image or video. And finally, it gives an equitable access to information for people with visual impairment, and it allows them to understand cities and experience them through Wikimedia Commons. Uh, so the second unconventional use in this project was trying to document the emotional experiences of people. Uh, and this was done through a very, very, very simple and silly uh, way, which was the change of the task or the request of the photography campaign. Usually, we ask people to document monuments, but here I added a very simple element. Document the monuments or the places that remind you of your home country, remembering that the majority of Brandt residents are not British. And it gave a very different result from the photography campaign that I used to lead. In terms of the photo's quality, actually the photos were not of a very, very good quality, but they were very, very informative. Because as an architect and as someone who is new to London, I could never choose the monuments that these people chose. And here is an example. So these two temples are in Brent. They are Hindu temples. According to you, what was the, uh, the temple that was mostly highlighted by participants? With the blue sky or with the gray sky? The blue sky. I would also say blue sky. Because even the architecture is Indian and you feel that you are in the country. But no, the participants highlighted the other one. And when I asked why, I asked people who live in, this, in, in, in the area, and I visited the two, I found that this beautiful temple with the blue sky is more touristic. It is a touristic landmark. And the other one is very, very authentic. I visited it during uh, like a ceremonial ritual, and the way people were talking to each other, were interacting with each other, you would say that they are one family. And it was very small, very cozy. The smell was very sparking, unlike the, this big monument. And therefore, I understood that heritage is not always, or landmarks are not always the buildings that are big and beautiful and with uh, expensive materials, but they can be very, very simple buildings where extraordinary things can occur because of the people inside. So, uh, the added value of this emotional mapping was, first of all, identifying what is really meaningful for people. If we want to tell what heritage is important than other buildings, we should refer to people. Then providing guidance for preservation projects, because as architects, we should rely on what is important for people instead of what is aesthetical for us. And finally, a better understanding of the communities that live in this area. And thank you. Any questions, remarks? If we have time. I have one question to the feedback about the picture. From whom came the picture? Uh, 
Hi. Hi. Uh, the question was um, the feedback you got for these two different pictures, the nice touristic uh, Hindu temple and the other one, from whom did this feature, uh, feedback came? I mean, was it people living there or because, I mean, as a person who does not know these places, I wouldn't go for the one on the left. Yeah, actually it was from people living there and to advertise the campaign we collaborated with uh, local NGOs in, in the borough in order to attract participants and also we created an Instagram account that was advertised on uh, all, only among the area of Brandt. And also, we required from the participants in the uh, campaign page uh, to write an extensive description about their relationship with this monument. Okay, that's an explanation, thank you. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Ah, uh, okay. No questions? Or I can ask. So just a quick question, what is the first step for someone who is interested in doing this in their own area? What would you advise is the first step to do this? I think the first step is to identify what is the need and what do you want to understand? Because Wikimedia Commons it is a tool, it's not the finality. Uh, so just start by the information you want to get and then try to find what are the tools provided by Commons that will allow you to uh, explore this subject. Uh, how did you record the sound bites and how did you upload them? Because, I mean, uh, the process for images is pretty easy and well known and uh, established, but sound bites, uh, I think it's still a bit difficult for a lot of users, even uh, old users. <laughs> Uh, yes, actually the only challenging thing with the sound is the format uh, because you need to convert it before uploading it to Commons. So I recorded just using my, video, uh, my, uh, my phone or camera. Uh, then I converted the sound to OGG and I uploaded it on Commons just like any other photo. And on Wikidata there is a property called audio where I put uh, the file. So as we are running out of time, uh, it's a humble request to everyone, please uh, contact directly to her. So we have another session going on. Thank, Thank you so you. much.